Delara, you have such a cushy number. Volcanoes and video games. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, so this is all about my PhD research. Um, it's all about how we can use video games for volcano education and outreach. Um, and for, so basically it's a whole genre of serious games, um, so which is what we've been looking into. Um, serious games. Serious games. <laughs> And uh, we've been using the Caribbean island of St Vincent. Um, so it's, it's not just video games and volcanoes, it's video games, volcanoes and the Caribbean. Yeah, it's not too bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> so St Vincent's probably not a volcano a lot of people know. Tell us, tell us a bit more about St Vincent. Yeah, so St Vincent is the largest island of St Vincent and the Grenadines um, in the Eastern Caribbean. Um, it's home to about 110,000 people and 20,000 people on St Vincent live on the flanks of the volcano La Freya. Mm. La Freya is an extremely violent eruptive volcano um, and has has had a, uh, some very large volcanoes in its history. It yeah. erupts roughly on a 100-year cyclicity. The last eruption, 1979, nobody died, um, but 20,000 people were um, evacuated to shelters um, in, the, in the south of the island for over four months. And then 1902, before that, 1,500 people were killed on St Vincent. So it's a very dangerous volcano, and it's not a question of uh, if it's going to erupt, it's a question of when, and resilience is really important. So where do video games come in then? So we've been using video games as a communication tool. Um, we've tried to use them to integrate within existing education and outreach programmes on St Vincent um, as a kind of method to um, engage with the generation. So 36 years have passed since um, La Cifre last erupted. That's 36 years. It's an entire generation on St Vincent that have no experience of anything to do with that volcano. It's trying to overcome some of the, the typical communication issues that you have. How can we keep this, this kind of generation engaged with, with uh, um, education about volcanoes when every year hurricanes strike the island, landslides, flooding, and other things like that that are more prominent in their day-to-day -day lives? And it's how can we bring volcanic hazard education into the forefront of people's minds and make it really memorable for a time of crisis. The game was developed as a collaborative project here at Plymouth University. Um, we worked with the um, IDAT team at, um, who, are who did all of the, the actual physical game development. I'm not a game designer and they're based here at the Immersive Visualisation Theatre. Um, so my role was doing all of the concept design, uh, looking through all the historical record to find plume heights, uh, wind directions, uh, where each phenomena went for two of the historical eruptions, uh, and basically storyboarded all of this in a series of storyboards as a communication tool between us and developers to make sure we had high fidelity visualisations. Um, we did lots of testing, many rounds of testing, just to make sure it really looked realistic. So the game is all about, it's all based upon St Vincent. So initially what happens is the players start with the island hub. And this is a DEM model of the island, which is an overlay with satellite imagery. Mm -hmm. And it means that the players can see the island from above, which maybe they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, we've then used three of the key population centres close to the volcano. So um, Chateau Blair, Fancy and Georgetown. Then what you can do is overlay the volcanic hazard map for the island, which shows which hazard zones they live in, in terms of volcanic risk. So people living in the high hazard zone or the very high hazard zone can see how actual close they live to the summit of the volcano. It then goes through visualisations of the historical eruptions of 1902 and 1979. shows what the different phenomena look like, where pyroclastic flows went, which valleys, um, how they affected different towns. It also shows the like, pyroclastic flows flowing over the sea, and all the different things like that. And it's got fantastic voiceovers, radio voiceovers, from Richie Robertson, of, uh, who works for the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Centre. And then it has a whole phase where it gives us information about the different formation and behaviour of each of the different volcanic hazards um, as a kind of knowledge transfer phase. And you've, what's really interesting is you've field tested us in those communities around St Vincent. So how did that go? Yeah, so last year I was really lucky to spend six weeks out in St Vincent. Um, I teamed up with the National Emergency Management Organisation, or NEMO, and as at the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Centre um, for their annual Volcano Awareness Week activities. So it's a whole week of activities where we do um, school education sessions for primary and secondary schools, um, stakeholder meetings, community groups, um, and the whole week's culminated with a volcano hike up to La Cifreya. With Last year we had 130 children. So during this week I tagged along with um, the education and outreach team at Seismic Research Centre um, and I visited um, 13 secondary schools, six of which we managed to do some testing with. So we took um, 
quizzes before and after they played the game to, to measure knowledge gain or learning gains to see how, how much they improve between sessions. Because this is the point really, isn't it? I mean, it's actually about evaluating whether video games are any good. Yeah, so that's exactly the point. What we're doing here is using video games not to replace existing outreach and education, but to integrate within already existing practices, to enhance them, and, and, and basically we're trying to understand how we can do that. So do you think this is the future in terms of the way that communication for hazards might go, hazards and risks? Yeah, I think this is really just the start right here. Video games are already proving to be really effective um, in various different uh, methods of natural hazards education. Um, but also we're seeing a, a, a real move into different creative media. So people are doing lots of different kind of um, approaches. Um, and this last year, the Sendai framework was um, finalized, which uh, had a, a mandate to uh, develop stronger, more resilient communities through a better education and outreach program. So I think we're really only seeing the start.